Welcome back, everyone. This is episode three of our podcast. I'm your host, Crimson Sin, with my co-host, M15. And on this week's episode, we started this one a little bit late, so um, we're going to talk about... We saw Guardians of the Galaxy uh, last week, and uh, I thought it was excellent. Uh, Marvel does it again. That doesn't disappoint. People didn't... Like, did you prefer the first one or this one? I, I think oh, I like I them both equally. The, the first one. I, I, I say a little oh, wow. bit of the first one, but I think they're both pretty good. Good for different reasons. But the first one was yeah. good because it was completely out of the blow. And this one just, you know, yeah, more no of the same kind it. of fun stuff and got to see cool characters and, of course, the music and everything. It's just, it just works. Oh, definitely. I think also not only the music as a character, but the fact that you know these characters. In the second one, maybe the story wasn't as involved as the first movie, but still, when you look at it, you just want to see these characters and they're so beloved and and just seeing, seeing, seeing Star-Lord again and just how what he does as a character and how he's, you know, such a fun guy to be around and just such a swashbuckler that we just like to see. Yeah, and just, you know, all the space like pirate them. basically is what these guys are. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they do good things, but they kind of, you know, like especially how, like, you know, in the beginning of the movie, Rocket basically just steals the thing they were supposed to protect he ends up becoming a, a thief of it. I, I know, that's what's so funny, but that's just how Rocket is. He sees an opportunity, he'll do it. Even if it doesn't make him any money, he doesn't care. He just wants to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's so weird, like, because what were they going to do with it? It's just the, those battery things. He just wanted them because oh. they, they told him not he couldn't have them. Spoilers, we forgot to say that at the beginning. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, but that's not a I mean, it's the first like, five minutes of the movie. That's just not major. Anything. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. True. Like, oh, yeah, we're definitely not going to talk about, the, you know, the ending or anything like that. But, yeah, we're just a, that's very, very basic beginning storyline. But um, I thought, oh, again, yeah. all the new characters they introduced they were acted very well. Um, his... and don't, don't, the only complaint I can really say is that you didn't get a lot of different um, location, locales. But besides that, eh, everything else is really good. Like the story, like the music, like the action was really, really good. Got a lot of. Uh, the I know there wasn't a lot of action set pieces, but the ones that we got were really good. Oh a lot yeah, of cool definitely. things were happening. Yeah, I mean, they were really gorgeous. Yep. Yeah, like in like the trailer, the you got that big giant you know. monster and everything. You see that in the trailer, that big uh, octopus guy. Like, I don't even know if that's even a character or anything. Let's pull this guy. No, out. it was just like a monster that was oh. they had to go, go kill. There you go. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I just tried to pull that guy out. He is too close to the edge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some intergalactic monster they had to destroy, and this one group of alien race had to go, and they hired him for that to get rid of it, yeah. It's because they didn't want to, like, use their own people, which is kind of yeah, funny. Yeah. There's those gold people and see you Drax, see in the trailer. And funny as ever. Oh, yeah, yeah see, Drax, yeah, true. The, the enemies that they're fighting in this movie, Drax is pretty much useless because he's just, like, a bruiser. And when you're fighting, you know, it's just, what, what do you want him to do? So he's just kind of comedy relief, you know, saying funny stuff. Yeah, something that Rocket was in the first movie that he yeah. Yeah, he's in more in the second movie. It was funny, but you actually what get to totally see Rocket moved. fight uh, uh, more and do more stuff, like with his, uh, you know, gadgets and stuff. Yeah. One thing I will say that is kind of bothering me how, like, some people are saying this is a Disney fight movie, and I don't agree with that at all. I, I mean, think it's. This I, is definitely. I don't. I've never actually heard anyone actually say that because if anyone actually says that, they get they're like, "What are you talking about?" Like what? What was so Disney about it? The fact that it has heart. Well, you, that's good. It's good in the movie. It's good to relate to your characters because the action movie, and the stuff that's like happening this. is very un-Disney. <laughs> oh yeah, very. I mean, a lot of things are happening like that. Yeah. But that's just people just want to hear this on the internet, and they, everyone takes it and they run with it because that's what everyone's saying, and that has to be the truth, and it's not. Like, like, but the thing is, I don't, I don't watch reviews. I, I don't listen to people's reviews or anything like that because I know what I like, and I don't need someone to, you know, validate my own opinion about something. But I mm -hmm. think it's just, it's just popular thing to hate things. It just is. Oh, definitely, I have to agree with that too. And another thing too, I would say about this uh, movie that I really think takes it to, you know, the Garden of the Galaxy to even higher levels, in, in some ways, is the fact that it's just. You see, you get to see the backstory of you know of Peter Quill, and you get to see these characters that you know, grow from like the last movie. You're like, oh wow, there's still that band of you know, you know, likable guys, and it's just, I just, I just love it. I think it's really good. 
Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, franchise one and two. Like, they could do a three, four, as long as they keep it, keep yeah. this going. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel stale at all. No, and the thing is, this was the third tier Marvel team. Oh, yeah. This was the I, one that no one I had knew no about. recollection of who the Guardians were. I, I knew Rocket, and oh. I knew Star-Lord, but just vaguely. Like, I, yeah. but they took these run-of-the-mill nothing characters and made into, um, a giant franchise. And I think... Yep. Let me just look up the numbers. I think it's something like over 600 million. 630 million worldwide wow. as, of, as of yesterday. There you go. So, one more weekend. It's going to hit a billion. It's still not done. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's just insane how much money these, 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 these movies make. And then you get, you know, not to diss DC movies, yeah. but they're, they're, they're left wanting. DC had Guardians of the Galaxy uh, uh, property, they would have done nothing with it because they wouldn't know what to, how to do it right. They just won it. They just, their track record so mediocre. I mean, they can't even get Batman and Superman right. How are they going to get, I mean, how are they going to get Guardians of the Galaxy right? They wouldn't be able to. Yeah, like, I, Wonder Woman's coming out soon, but uh, I don't know. But yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, it was great. Loved it. Um, definitely highly recommended. Even if you. You didn't like the first one. I think this one had, brings a lot more different stuff, so it's not just a rehash of the old, of the first film. Definitely, uh, definitely worth checking out. I'm glad I saw it, and if I had the chance to see it again, I think I definitely would see it again. Oh, me too, definitely. And save for the whole credits, there's a lot of. Oh like, yeah, there's there's like seven endings or little fun little things yeah. at the end. Yeah, there's definitely the most in a Marvel movie ever. Yeah, that's what makes it funny though. I think they did that intentionally, but yeah, that was good. So, with that up, we're going to talk about uh, the new Fox, Brian Singer-directed TV show called The Gifted, which is a uh, X-Men mutant TV yes, show. Yes, it is X-Men. Um, saw the trailer. Um, I don't know if these are new characters. Did they make up these characters, or are they based off actual Marvel characters? I have not I heard anything to my knowledge on that. I'm not sure, but yeah, it would seem like they might be new from because their powers tell. don't necessarily seem very um, recognizable. There was Blink. I know because there was like that Asian girl with like the elf looking ears. That definitely looked like mm -hmm. looks like Blink. But who can make the portals and stuff? Yeah, yeah. You see her for like Anywhere a world, second. Yeah. You see her like for a second in the movie or the movie, maybe it's a TV mixture. Series. Yeah, of like and, mutants old and new. Maybe that's what it is. And I'm thinking the girl who has the um ah jeez I hit jump. Um, the girl who has the uh. Looks like she had green powers, like green energy coming from her. Look, maybe that could be Polaris. Could be, could be. That's a good guess. Because she was moving cars around and stuff with like mm -hmm. her uh, powers. So I'm thinking that's magnetic type power. So she could be Polaris. That'd be cool. Yeah. That's a connected yeah, magneto the trailer, there. Yeah, exactly. From the trailer, you 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 get a lot from what the story's going. I guess they're they're the the, 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 the one of the main characters. Her dad must be working on the side trying to, you know, track down mutants basically for the government. And she finds out her daughter's a mutant and he's, well, now he wants to protect his daughter. You know, he doesn't want his daughter to be taken away. So it's kind of has that dynamic. Like, this is all in the first trailer. This gives us away. So I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, you get a lot of plot the, points. So there must be yeah, others. Yeah, definitely. I guess they're going to be a family on the run. I think that's what's going to be. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking, too. And, and I thought it was really interesting. The one guy had the like kids the... getting bullied. Yeah, that, that's Just like a, a, the, a theme, you know. Oh, they're 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 mm. picked on, and I don't know that kid's powers were. Again, it looks like a lot of people had metal based powers, because he was like oh, yeah, like the, the, the shower powers, heads yeah. and stuff. It was really mm -hmm. weird. Like, okay, there's like three or four characters with metal powers or energy. It was super weird. Like, I didn't, I couldn't really pick out what exactly their mutant abilities were. I Me thought that was kind of strange. Was... Like, not very unique looking powers. Well, it's fun. It's funny to me, and I think it's interesting, is that if you look at this series, it seems like this seems to be a pattern now with Fox TV shows that have X-Men in it, or mutants, because in Legion, all their powers are kind of out there, too. They weren't the standard fair powers, like... Yeah, so you know, it's laser Legion, beams one or flying oh, or anything nothing like, that. like that. No, it's like one where a guy is like two different people, and the other person's a female, and the gang guy's a male, and they're like two separate people. And they can merge anytime they want, so it's kind of more out there. It's the real powers, not something you would see in a movie setting, but it works perfect for a TV show because you can develop that into something. Uh, it's just kind of – it was kind of cool, though. You see that the guy had a Sentinel program shirt, mm -hmm. and those little robots are like little baby Sentinels. 
So maybe I know, by right? the end of the series, we'll get the the big the big purple Sentinels that we're all we love yeah. from the '90s. Exactly. And let's see if these are going to tie in with the movies any, anyhow. I mean, they talk about the characters. Yeah, you know, they they, they, they say X Men, they say the Mutant Brotherhood. So these things exist mm -hmm. in this world, which is cool. Is that definitely? So is this going to come down the line in a movie franchise? Who knows? I mean, or is this here just side stories? You know. And and what's our what's our timeline on this? Does it take place after? X2, X3, did, did, did X3 not count? Days Future Past? I'm, I'm sure it's... There's it's a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. don't know exactly. But yeah, so definitely, definitely would check it that. out. Um, didn't look stupid. I, I didn't. I wasn't feeling Cloak and Dagger when I saw that trailer. I, I, yeah. I, I wasn't feeling it. This, I'm feeling this. This looks like something I could definitely give it a, definitely give it a chance of maybe watching three or four episodes. Yeah. Because something like Cloak but and Dagger is going to have to blow me away. For me to watch it. Oh yeah, it, the, the funny thing is, there's all these uh, Marvel TV shows coming out about mutants now, and it's like, hope this is going to be overkill for a lot of people because you have these two mutant shows, and then you have, you know, the Inhumans <laughs> on the Disney side. So yeah, you have Inhumans, and then the New Mutants, which is an actual movie. Yeah. So like, is that going to play into this? Because you would think New Mutants would, and then the Runaways. That's another X Men mutant TV show. I'm saying on Hulu. Yeah. So yeah, we got a lot, a lot of comic book properties being turned into TV shows and movies. Oh, and where are we hitting saturation? Oversaturation. Point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oversaturation, definitely. I agree with that. I think and that's not point... counting I mean, the DC stuff. No. Because we still but have even Arrow, more Gotham, DC shows, so. Supergirl, Flash. Is... Yeah, Flash. Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, I think Supergirl being the weakest of all of them. Not bad, mm -hmm. just definitely the weakest of all the DC shows. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean it's, not, it's not terrible, but it's just what it is what it is. When you have such things like, you know, Flash is doing phenomenal. I mean, that and in Arrows and shows like that, that just have a more of a history to go off of, you know. But, yeah, it's looks, things, being wounded. a lot of things to look forward to, but I'm, I'm worried, again, about too many. We're getting to the thing where I can oh, me too. non-stop comic book shows. And it's so funny because growing up, you always wanted that. Like, oh, man, it'd be so cool if there was, like, all these comic books were made into movies and shows. And now that we're getting it, well, I don't know. You're like, yeah, I'm not so sure. Well, it's funny. That's the same thing I used to think about when I was younger. Like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool when we used to when I wake up Saturday morning and watch, like, um, what were they called? The, uh, the GameSpot uh, TV show for a half hour for video games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, that's so cool. Wouldn't it be cool to get a network? And we did, and it like G4, and it didn't turn out to be as great as we thought. Like, I think that's the case here, you know? Yeah, we're, all of them can't be winners. That, that's, the, that's just the no. truth of anything. Like, you, you can't make everything Yeah, perfect. television, no matter what. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had a bunch of... Go ahead, grab it. I don't... Oh, I got full magic. I oh, I thought I... Oh, sorry. I looked at I'm it. on the left. Okay. But, um, yeah, definitely gonna be kind of cool uh, i kind of be worried there might be a little too much but you know market will bear what it can bear if we can have 10 comic book shows and people that's are true. watching that's so true i agree and lastly and... we have uh sega thing uh, <laughs> we have sega announcing that they want to bring back old ips yeah, for example, the game we're playing right now, Golden Axe, uh, hasn't had mm -hmm. a game in 20 years. And they nope. want to bring back old franchises because I guess they've been making pretty good money. Uh, the Persona games are selling really well. Uh, the Yakuza games are selling really, really well. So I guess Sega's willing to maybe take some chances on some old IPs that haven't been touched in a while. I would love to see a new Golden Axe just, just like this, where it's just a, a side-scroller. Don't try 2D. to do anything more than it is. Like, they did that whole, I think it was on the 360, it was, like, called Beast Rider or something. No, we don't want yeah. all that extra craziness. It's just not worth it. Just just like this, clean up the graphics, but still make it look like it could be in an arcade game from the 90s. And I think the same goes for Ultra Beaster and Street Fighter Rage. Yeah, just yeah. Give me Street... 2D. I just need 2D, maybe a little updated graphics, and we're good. Yeah, and Ultra Beast, Street to Rage, um, Alien Syndrome, like, all those old classic you know, That'd be fun. Sega games that literally made Sega what it what it was. You want to get Sony continues? Are you down down and out? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm down and out. But um, definitely would love to see that the the, the RPGs, the Fantasy Stars, Shining Force, uh, 
Oh, Beyond Oasis. There's just so many properties Sega could just tap into. Oh, definitely. I agree with that. I mean, there, there's, you you think about the infinite ones that you could do. There's just you think of that. You even um, even stuff like I think they could do. Uh, they could do Marvel. They'd have a lot to tweak on it, but I think that could even work, even though it's not yeah. super old. But again, it's another forgotten IP. It just had its you know couple. Yeah. Did it have two games or just one? I think it's one, as far as I yeah, can tell. Yeah, yeah, just the one. Oh dang. Oh. I don't know how, how can you, it won't let you hit start. That's super weird. Because there's no way no. you went through all... But, um, yeah, Sega has... I think if they do it right and don't worry about trying to be... You know, the... Try to have every feature in the world, every little thing you want to do, like every other game. Just what made these games great yeah. is their simplicity and they're just fun to play. And then the game... Game I'd like to see too would be Outrun. I think that could be cool. Oh, yeah. Killed Outrun. I don't want them to update it. Um, like Afterburner, Outrun, those those types of games. Mhm. Mm yeah, oh yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that would be high on the list too. And then keep some of the iconic music. Just tweak it a little bit. Don't change it too much, you know, into your own thing. I know people like to do that when they get an old IP and make a new game out of it. Yeah, they they, they do too much. And then yeah. you know, but there's stuff like the new Double Dragon, which was little. They tried too hard to be like the the old. Oh, oh yeah. See, that's the thing. Yeah, where even they had the same glitches in the flicker in the background, which is so annoying to play when you saw because you couldn't take it off. There was no option to change that. So it's like, well, I didn't want that. Yeah, I think I just think Sega has in a good position to try some new things. Me, yeah, I agree. Because we still got Shemu coming out, AAA title that's going to be humongous and. You oh yeah, probably satisfy that that itch. Hope oh, again, Shimu. That's just a whole nother. I liked it, but I understood what it was. I think a lot of people might go into Shimu thinking it's going to be something that it's not. It's not an yeah. action. See, game. I'm a... No, it's not. Yeah, and it just people might think, oh, where's all the action? Well, that's not what Shimu was about. It never was about beating up a bunch of bad guys. You cared about the story. You cared about the character. You wanted to see Ryu get through this and avenge his father or find out the secret behind the adapt medallion and all that stuff there's gonna have to be a primer <laughs> there's a lot of story that people don't know yeah, i think they need to release a blu-ray or dvd with it beforehand so that way everyone can get caught up in the story because there's a lot to cut and then teach them how the game's gonna be like a little tutorial oh this is not gonna be this and this it's gonna be more of a slower pace you try to find the mystery about what happened to your father it's not gonna be necessarily you know Oh, I'm gonna kick this guy's but even though it does have the virtual fighter engine when you fight, it's not that's not what it's about. Yeah, it's not um it's not a beat 'em up. Even though it kinda no. looks like it would be a beat up beat 'em up, it's it's totally not. No. You know, you have to go to work and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's funny. I, and stuff. Oh yeah, like in the first game, but I, I actually love this franchise. I'm looking forward to playing the new game, but again, I know what it's about though, so I know what going in what it's about. The younger people when they did that uh Kickstarter campaign to put money into they say, oh, they're just doing it because, oh, Sony's saying in the press conference I gotta go do it instead of realizing, oh, what's this really about? Yeah, I don't want people to be disappointed in Shenmue. Yeah, it's, it's that's a, what it's I'm a good, about It's a good too. enough game that you don't need, you know, marketing to... Yeah, it's super weird. There's no way you wasted all those continues. I must have just... They must have messed up and just kicked me out. Let's see if I can join your game. I'm still watching your game, though. You're at the last part anyways. And, uh... Yeah, death yeah, so I... already. But yeah, definitely uh, looking yeah. Sega, take some chances, but understand what made these games great. So don't try yep. to take a great game and add stupid stuff that people don't want. Like they did with Sonic uh, so many years. <laughs> no one wants Sonic exactly. running around a town talking to people. Booyah! And the thing also... You got him perfect. Yeah. But what also I didn't understand is how people got really mad at that too. They literally got mad like like when they remade Turtles in Time and made it to new graphics. I didn't see a problem with it. So sometimes some people will get mad when I didn't think there's reason to when they put it on the 360. Yeah, the the reshelled or I think that's what it was called. Yeah. I, I yeah. thought it was fine. I, I guess people are just so in love with the old style. See, if they made a new Turtles game, I don't think they would have a mind so much just that they remaked an old Turtles game. Yeah. And in fact, they had elements in the Super Nintendo version they couldn't bring over. Well, that wasn't the arcade version, so... You can't expect the same game. 
See, how come they didn't follow this storyline where the monsters escaped the arcade machine? Like, what the hell? That's hilarious. I love that. Look at that. I'm running after him. See him back. It's so stupid. Like, so the real ending is the game came to life? Like, how the hell did that happen? Well, remember, Ultra Beast was just uh, a movie, so they did. Yeah, they, yeah, it was like a good story. Sega. Yeah. Sega always did funny things. Oh, Shinobi, that's another game. A classic arcade Oh, yeah, Shinobi would back. be a great one. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's not as good as Real Hollow Boost, but he's still not bad. He's he's up there, though. Yeah, for, uh, see, the thing is, but he did the Ninja Gaiden games, those were just. The, oh, the yeah. Arcade was so funny because the arcade version of Ninja Gaiden actually kind of sucked. It's the Nintendo it, it's... version that everyone loves. Yeah, exactly. It's hard, but it, it's fun. Look at that score. No, but <laughs> yeah, I know you're doing good. But um, definitely, uh, Sega has a lot, a lot of different things they can do. I got a D. <laughs> but um, that's gonna wrap up this episode. Um, we, oh, you, we get... take, you want to talk about the Orville real quick? Oh yeah, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Um, that 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 thing. Oh yeah, there's I guess a new sci-fi, uh, Seth MacFarlane. So it's going to be a, a comedy series, and it's basically Galaxy Quest, a TV series, without actually being called Galaxy Quest. Yeah, basically. Uh, we saw the trailer. It, I, again, I laughed at the jokes. It was funny. It gives you a captain who's kind of a moron, but it, it's it's something to laugh at. Yeah, it's called the Orville, which is a funny name for it. Uh, the Orville Rettbacher. It's a popcorn chip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Again, you can see the little bit, but you can see McFarlane being a nerd himself. You can see he's doing it out of an endearing man. He's not doing it to be mean-spirited. There is no sense of, oh, I get to put down Star Trek now. It's not anything like that. It's a fondness with the jokes and all that. Oh, if you want to, yeah, why not? But how do you – I don't know how – there we go. You had to start. Okay. Um, I'm going to be the Gimli guy now. Um, But, yeah, it looked funny. It looked okay. Um – the, the the graphics look good. The the makeup for the characters look good. So it doesn't look doesn't look super cheap or anything. But it just kind of oh, has yeah, that sitcom. It looks like high budget, yeah. That sitcom funny humor, but in a, on a sci-fi setting. Yeah, basically like 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 you said earlier when we were talking about this other day. It's like it feels like they took regular people and put them in this future setting. That's what makes it yeah, funny. like people from like today. Like how they have normal from stuff. Yeah, like, like like for some somehow people with their same kind of problems and hangups, but in the future. Let's see, yeah. like in Star Trek, like where you can see that humanity evolved. And in this future, no, we're we're exactly the same like we've always been. Except we got ships now. We're all united on, on the planet. But yeah, that's, that's funny. So, but as well, I mean, I wanted to. I mean, with McFarlane, he's so popular. Maybe that popularity alone will get it to stay popular, and people will watch it and give it a chance. So. Well, he did that that Western movie, A Hundred Ways to Die or something, and that movie bombed. Oh, like, did it? Oh, that's Yeah, like song, I remember man. seeing trailers for it, and it just bombed. So, it, it, McFarland isn't, you know, gold, but this one actually looks interesting. It definitely looks like, uh, I'll make you laugh. It'll, have, it'll make fun of sci-fi tropes. It'll make fun of um, the things that we come to love about Star Trek and Star Wars, and I'm pretty man. sure they're going to just lampoon a lot of those ideas. <laughs> And I know a lot of geeks get mad at things like that, but give it a chance, guys. Seriously, don't take it too seriously or get mad or offended. I don't think, like I said, it's not being done to be mean. There's no malice in the material if you look at it. It looks like it's being done in jest and because, give it a chance. Because he's a nerd at heart, but he's also a yeah. comedian too, so. Yep, that's true. So I think that's why he can work on that level. And it's funny, this is the first live action that he's doing a major part in, which is, could be interesting, too. I'm trying to think. I don't think he's ever done a, a big live action thing. No, he's done bit parts in movies, but never done, yeah, in shows, but never as a main like character. T especially no. TV. He lots of voice no. work and stuff, but not, like, actual live action. Nope. This should be interesting to see how he takes it, but so far it looks promising. I just hope I want to see some more, and... I'm sure when Standing Old Comic Con comes out, we'll probably get a Dust Watch yeah. episode and also and people or word, or at least word, a, not get around. An extended preview, you know, it's going to be a longer preview, probably about 10, 15 minutes, yep. if not the whole first episode. I Yeah, I agree with that, definitely. And so is there anything else? I think that's going to wrap it up because we do have yeah, I think uh, that's it. the Destiny reveal for Destiny 2 is going to be on uh, Wednesday. And we'll do a preview 
of what we want to see in Destiny 2, and then we'll do a reaction to what we saw the next day. So we'll definitely have, we'll have three videos out this week since we yep. uh, took a little And we'll go back to our standard one break. again. Yeah, go back to the standard. Yeah. But just Destiny, definitely looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. And so it's going to be an all-Destiny show uh, next next time. Yep. So that's going to be uh, it for us. Um, signing off, uh, Crimson Sin. And, and I'm M15. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. See you next time.